I have a friend who's an artist and he's sometimes taken a view which I don't agree with very well. You hold up a flower and say, look how beautiful it is. And I'll agree, I think. And he says, you see, as I as an artist can see how beautiful this is. But you as a scientist, oh, take this all apart and it becomes dull thing. And I think that he's kind of nutty. First of all, the beauty that he sees is available to other people and to me too. I believe, although I may not be quite as refined as aesthetically as he is, that I can appreciate the beauty of a flower. At the same time, I see much more about the flower than he sees. I could imagine the cells in there, the complicated actions inside, which also have a beauty. I mean, it's not just beauty at this dimension of one centimeter, there's also beauty at a smaller dimension. The inner structure, also the processes, the fact that the colors and the flower evolved in order to attract insects to pollinate it is interesting. It means that insects can see the color. It adds a question. Does this aesthetic sense also exist in the lower forms? Why is it aesthetic? All kinds of interesting questions, which the science knowledge only adds to the excitement, the mystery, and the awe of a flower. It only adds. I don't understand how it subtracts. I was called by the universe. It's my life runs. I've known this since I was a kid. And I looked up, and the lights dimmed, and the stars came out. I had no choice in that. But I know that the molecules in my body are traceable to phenomena in the cosmos. They were forged in the centers of stars that went unstable at the ends of their lives. They exploded, scattered their enriched contents, sprinkled into gas clouds that then collapsed to form stars and planets. I have to know how nature works. And we are really here on a wonderful threshold of knowledge. The ascent of man is always teaching in the balance. There's always a sense of uncertainty as to whether when man lifts his foot for the next step, it's really going to come down ahead. And what is ahead of us? At last, the bringing together of all that we've learned in physics and in biology towards an understanding of where we have come, what man is. I'm a collection of organic molecules called Carl Sagan. You're a collection of almost identical molecules with a different collective label. But is that all? Is there nothing in here but molecules? Some people find that idea somehow demeaning to human dignity. But for myself, I find it elevating and exhilarating to discover that we live in a universe which permits the evolution of molecular machines as intricate and subtle as we. The beauty of a living thing is not the atoms that go into it, but the way those atoms are put together, information, distilled over four billion years of biological evolution. The story I want to tell you is a remarkable story about the inhabitants of a small and rocky, ocean-covered little world in orbit around an ordinary star in an ordinary galaxy. And this story goes that these beings, with soaring imagination and laughing at the idea of boundaries and limitations, over time developed the languages of mathematics and science, became skilled technologists, developed mastery over gravity, and eventually flung themselves and their machines into the interplanetary space surrounding them. And they did this merely in response to an innate desire to explore and to learn about their cosmic neighborhood and to secure the future of their progeny and to seek the answers to questions that had vexed them and every generation of their ancestors before them. How is it that their small planet and they living on it came to be? And what is the great cosmic theater in which life on their planet had unfolded? Piece of work is a man. 
unknowable in reason, how infinite in faculty, in form, in moving, how express and admirable, in action, how like an angel, in apprehension, how like a god, the beauty of the world, the paragon of animals, and yet to me, what is this? a small iridescent sphere of almost unbearable brightness. At first I thought it was spinning. Then I realized that the movement was an illusion produced by the dizzying spectacles of the sun. I saw the populous sea, saw simultaneous night and day, saw tigers, pistons, bisons, tides and armies, saw the circulation of my dark blood, saw the coils and springs of love and the alterations of death, and I felt dizzy and I wept because my eyes had seen that secret hypothetical object whose name has been usurped by men but which no man has ever truly looked upon, the inconceivable universe.